logged hundreds of hours playing Call of Duty. When do I get to become a real U.S. soldier? <laughs> Hi, my name is Ryan Lane, and welcome to my review channel. So for today's movie, I will be reviewing Gran Turismo, directed by Neil Blockamp and starring Archie Madikwe, David Harbour, and Orlando Bloom. So this film tells the story of Jan Mardenborough, played by Archie Madikwe. He is a college dropout who loves playing Gran Turismo racing games, or racing simulators as he calls them. And he uh, also has dreams of doing the thing IRL, much to the chagrin of his former footballer, or as we like to call it, a soccer a father, uh, uh, Steve, played by Dijon Honsu. Jan uh, will get his chance to race in real life when Nissan marketing executive uh, Dan Danny Moore, played by Orlando Bloom, uh, teams up with uh, Jack Salter, played by David Harbour, a former race car driver and chief uh, mechanic. And so, he, yeah, you know, this story tells the story of how Danny becomes a you know full-blown racer with those sweets and graduates from noob to full-blown expert, baby. So, this film is kind of uneven. Uh, I'll go through some of the negatives, but don't worry, there are there are positives, there are positives. Uh, the negative mainly lies with the screenplay. The f there are two main issues that keep this film from not quite as achieving the dramatic highs at once, too. The uh, sh uneven structure that strands characters off the screen for large stretches of runtime, and the thin characterization. The thin characterization rears its head during scenes like uh, a qualifying match when Jack and Danny are debating which racer to uh, send to the big leagues. And uh, between uh, Jan and this other racer, Marty, uh, well, not Marty, Maddie, played by Darren Barnett. And the issue that really causes this moment to fall flat is the fact that they haven't fully defined Maddie. He's just you know, loosely defined as a, you know, cocky driver who's American, I think. It's, they don't do a good job of, it, like, making you think, oh, what if, you know, uh, you know, Jan doesn't get picked? It's like, of course he's going to get picked. It, the film doesn't do a good job of adding tension to that. Plus, there's a sort of a rival driver called Capra, played by Josh uh, Stradowski, and yeah, he's a hot-headed driver who hates the idea of of sim drivers being allowed in you know professional racing. Yeah, he never has any interesting things to say beyond that. Again, there are a few moments where you think, oh, you know, maybe we'll get to see a new angle of him, but you know, nope, he learns absolutely nothing. I mean, granted, he's not the main character, but. Typically, you know, you expect the rival character to at least have, I don't know, if not character development, that at least, you know, be an interesting character. The other issue facing the screenplay is the, like I said, the uneven structure. Like, important characters like uh, Steve's no, not Steve's father, Jan's father, Steve, they disappear for large stretches of runtime, and w when all these characters like come together in the final act and the film tries to mine moments of pathos these moments don't hit as hard as they should like i'd say the only moment that really hits well is the dynamic between jack and and jan if only because you know you actually see their dynamic on screen you know the two characters don't disappear for large stretches of runtime the screenplay isn't without positives, though. The film does give its primary trio of characters fun and compelling moments. The attempts at humor, again, they're not exactly belly laugh worthy, but, you know, they land some solid chuckles. And there's a pretty big second act plot development that lends this otherwise lighthearted movie some actual real tensions and stakes. I will definitely say that. Also, the driving montages... Well, they don't lend as much credibility to this, you know, based on a true story story. They are fun to watch and do give David Harbour some fun uh, lines to roast the uh, n nerd gamers with. So, you know, that's always fun. 
So though the actors don't have uh, the best material to work with at times, either due to thin characterization or uh, being off screen, they are all the performances are done well. There's no bad performance in this movie, really. Archie Madaque gives a solid performance as Jan, an aspiring racer. Uh, his uh, desire to make sure nobody gets hurt and his actual knowledge of how racing works. Again, it's not great, but it's not as bad as as other characters think it's going to be. So, yeah, his knowledge of racing and his empathy to make sure people are safe do endear him to the audience. And David Harbour is clearly having fun with uh, the uh, old wise mentor role. He, he does lend a lot, help lend this film some pathos and has a really good backstory. Okay, maybe not really good. It, it's a good backstory. It, and plus, like I said, the two, Jack and Jan, they have good interactions together. And the supporting cast... Though, again, though they disappear for stretches of the runtime and don't have the best characterization at times, they do give good performances. Like, the actor playing uh, Jan's father, he he's alright. Uh, and same goes for everyone else in the supporting cast, really. Again, even the actor playing Capra. Again, he's not good, but, you know, he's playing the assignment as he was probably told to. Be a hothead driver and... You know, he achieves it, you know, perfectly fine. The film's best strength lies with the races themselves. Director Blockhamp expertly uses VFX to show Jan's perspective and how he turns the real world into a video game and vice versa. And this lends to some pretty fun visuals. The only time this approach doesn't work is during a police chase as the fun nature of the visuals jars tonally with the seriousness of a police chase so it doesn't quite work it just fell off again it's only one moment and it's relatively brief in the movie also the races are intense and they do what cinematic races should do they make you cheer when the protagonist succeeds and they make you hold your breath whenever accidents occur Plus, the film manages to use drones footage to surprisingly solid effect. Like, it does help sell the kinetic nature of the races. And it does show that drones might have a legitimate place in cinematic storytelling yet. The only issue, though, is with the cinematography is the slow motion. As, while it doesn't exactly approach Zack Snyder levels, it's still kind of overused. So... Though it fails to race past uh, cliched storytelling, this glorified Sony ad manages to get second place thanks to solid performances and fun racing sequences. So with all that in mind, I will be giving Gran Turismo 3 out of 5 stars. Anyway, thank you for watching. Have a good rest of your day. If you like this review and would like to see more like it, be sure to like and subscribe and leave a comment down below. And for today's comment section prompt of the day, what is your favorite video game movie and why?